The ambitious and crazy Biosphere 2 experiment is only remembered now because Pauly Shore mentioned it in his movie Biodome, which is a shame. The Biosphere 2 project was ambitious, idealistic, and apocalyptic. It was some pretty crazy science that involved drama, intrigue, cults, and billionaires. There are a lot of crazy Biosphere 2 stories that prove this. In short, the movie should have been a David Fincher thriller instead of a low-budget comedy. The Biosphere 2 experiment was done in an artificial ecosystem that was completely closed. The world's largest formal experiment covered three acres and five ecosystems, ocean, rainforest, desert, mangrove wetlands, and savanna grasslands. Biosphere 2 was supposed to test how people affect the environment by locking eight people inside for two years, from September 26, 1991, to September 26, 1993. The people who took part were called Bionets, and they wore clothes made by Marilyn Monroe's former dressmaker. Mission Control kept a close eye on them as they went into the closed ecosystem. The whole project was done to show that biomes are sustainable environments that could lead to people living on Mars. Watch to learn some crazy things about Biosphere 2 that you didn't know. Biosphere 2 was started by a strange, secret cult. The 2016 book The Tyranets by T.C. Boyle, which is loosely based on the Biosphere 2 experiment, left them out because they don't really make sense. Yet, it happened. Bad religion says that sometimes the truth is stranger than fiction. The main person who planned and started the Biosphere 2 project was a man named Johnny Dolphin. But he was not born with the name Johnny Dolphin. He was born with the name John P. Allen. John P. Allen was a well-known metallurgist who also did a little bit of acting. He worked in Arizona with the Caravan of Dreams, an avant-garde theater group. A small group of people started to watch the group. Depending on who you ask, it then changed into a doomsday cult with an end-of-the-world theme. Alan started writing books under the name Johnny Dolphin at this point. Dolphin thought that the only way to stop the end of the world was to go into space and live on Mars. The first people to live in Biosphere 2 were lucky enough to be part of the Caravan of Dreams. Everyone who worked on Biosphere 2 hoped that it would lead to similar projects on Mars. One bionet snapped off her own finger. That is, she broke the glass seal. Self-sufficiency was one of the most important parts of the experiment. Nothing could go in or out of the biosphere because it was sealed. But after eight months, bionet Jane Pointer accidentally cut off the tip of her finger while cooking. The medical officer tried to sew the tip back on, but it didn't work. Within a few days, it shrank and turned black. Mission Control decided to take her off the mission so that she could get medical help. From there, things for the mission only got worse. Pointer came back with two duffel bags full of things and tools, but he didn't know what they were. Even now, nobody knows what's inside them. Because of this, many people have started to doubt the whole experiment. One of the main goals of Biosphere 2 was to make an atmosphere that could take care of itself. Carbon dioxide gas would be cleaned out of the air by the rainforest, and the trees would put oxygen back into the air. But it's still not clear if the biosphere was really self-sufficient or not. Scientists snuck in a big machine to clean up carbon dioxide in case the gas got to dangerous levels. The scrubbers on submarines were made by engineers so that the sailors could breathe clean air. The bionets also got the same service from them. Unfortunately, they were always running, so the whole project was a failure. The point of the project was to find out what conditions were needed for a self-sustaining, not manipulated, environment. Dr. Roy Walford starved the bionets for science. One of the side effects of the low food yield of the first year of Biosphere 2 was that the doctor, Dr. Roy Walford, was able to test his views on healthy hunger. At 69 years old, Dr. Walford had spent decades focusing on improving life expectancy. In his tests, he observed that skinny mice outlived heavy ones, and his findings convinced him that a nutritious, low-calorie diet was the secret to living longer. In fact, he anticipated that people may live 120 years on what he dubbed the Kron diet. So, as the carbon dioxide levels rose, and crops began dying, he was able to test his idea on the bionets. At first, it looked he was correct. The men dropped 18% of their body weight, and women lost 10%. Their blood sugar, blood pressure, and cholesterol levels all fell. Unfortunately, 
there were negative consequences to the substantial weight loss. As their bodies burned off the fat reserves, stored poisons were liberated and filled their blood. The Bionets grumbled about sluggishness and mental exhaustion, and food theft became an issue among them. Some observers assumed that the food rations led to the group's internal conflict. The Bionets grew and raised their own food on a half-acre organic farm inside the biosphere, and it was important that they raised high-yield crops on such a small plot in order to have the little nutrition that they did. Sweet potatoes and carrots, in particular, thrived in the Biosphere 2 environment and quickly became the staples of their diet. Sweet potatoes and carrots are high in beta-carotene. Beta-carotene, in turn, is what gives sweet potatoes and carrots their orange hue. The Bionets ate such an abundance of sweet potatoes that all of their skin glowed orange, like Willy Wonka's Oompa Loompas. The Bionets used KY jelly to attract cockroaches. Cockroaches doing well in the biodome shouldn't be a surprise to anyone. They can survive in almost any setting. What's surprising is that they were able to get out of a place that was so closely watched and closed off. When the lights went out at night, there were a lot of cockroaches in the kitchen. To get rid of the pests, the crew would put KY jelly on coffee cups. Dr. Roy Walford asked for four tubes of the stuff for gynecological exams before the clinic closed, but he got four cases instead. The bionets would put papaya at the bottom of the cup to lure the cups. The roaches would get inside, but they couldn't get out because the sides were too slippery. Then, they were crushed and fed to the chickens. The crew split into warring tribes. As the experiment progressed, the crew began to splinter. With oxygen and food levels low, half of the crew wanted to break closure for more supplies in order to continue their scientific studies. The other half believed that survival without assistance no matter the cost was the most important aspect of the mission. Heated arguments often resulted in the crew spitting in each other's faces. Relations got so bad that the groups quit speaking. Mission Control brought in a psychologist to see if they had gone mad. The psychologist blamed it on a power struggle and did not intervene. The crew members had to compete in a series of challenges to participate. For such a grand scientific experiment, there were surprisingly few scientists on the crew. Of the original eight members, there was only one doctor, Dr. Roy Waldorf, who was in charge of their health. John Allen, aka Johnny Dolphin, selected the other members based on how well they did in a series of challenges. They lived in Australia with Aboriginals for a year, they worked on a farm, they lived on a boat, they performed in an improvised play. It was like winning Survivor to compete on Big Brother. The crew members had to compete in a series of challenges to participate. For such a grand scientific experiment, there were surprisingly few scientists on the crew. Of the original eight members, there was only one doctor, Dr. Roy Waldorf, who was in charge of their health. John Allen, aka Johnny Dolphin, selected the other members based on how well they did in a series of challenges. They lived in Australia with Aboriginals for a year, they worked on a farm, they lived on a boat, they performed in an improvised play. It was like winning Survivor to compete on Big Brother. The Biosphere found out why coral reefs were dying. Even though the first experiment with the Biosphere unit didn't work, it led to some very interesting discoveries. After the crew turned against Steve Bannon, the buildings were bought by the University of Arizona and then by Columbia University. It was used as a big lab by both Arizona and Columbia. Scientists were able to change the environment to be like Earth, and because of how Biosphere 2 was made, they could even see how Earth will look in the future. One important thing they found was that high levels of carbon dioxide in the oceans were making the water more acidic, which killed coral reefs. They did this in the Biosphere by putting more carbon dioxide into the ocean and watching what happened. Before that, nobody knew why the Great Barrier Reef was slowly dying. So this crazy fever dream did lead to something good after all, 